Hi, everybody. Kim West, the Sleep Lady. And on this episode of the Gentle Parenting Show, I am so honored and excited to have my friend and my colleague, Donna Kay from ADHD Thrive Institute. And she is going to talk to us about how we can heal ADHD naturally. So super excited to dive into that. But before we do, I wanted to welcome you, Donna. Thank you very much, Kim. I am so excited to be here and I've been waiting a long time to get on and we've finally been able to schedule it. (laughs) Exactly. And so tell us a little bit before we get into the how-to tips, um, how did you get into uh, this, you know, holistic health and nutrition industry? Yeah, look, it's a, it's an, it's an interesting journey for sure. Uh, but believe it or not, I actually used to be completely removed from this health and wellness space, and I was actually in accounting, and um, which is so far removed. Uh, mm-hmm. And I probably would have continued on that journey if my concerns over my son's health hadn't really grown as much as they as they did and his his meltdowns became so uh, dramatic um his energy seemed so much higher than every other child and my gut told me that yeah. there was something missing and mm-hmm. eventually his tantrums became even more severe and and that's when his teachers started noticing differences in him as well and he was diagnosed with ADHD and immediately put on medication and you know at first how old was he how old was he then he was four four he was four and the doctor handed Mm -hmm. us a prescription medication for strong uh amphetamine drugs and Mm -hmm. honestly at first I felt relieved uh with the diagnosis Mm -hmm. and with the medication and thinking we were finally getting the help that we needed but um things didn't last very long and his his dosage did increase and side effects came and became worse mm-hmm. and worse and his doctor prescribed another prescription to counteract the side effects of the f- the first mm-hmm. and this continued until uh, he was on three very strong meds and the doctor mm-hmm. handed me a fourth prescription to counteract mm-hmm. some new side effects that had just pop up So that was the turning point that really completely changed my career path. And I went back to school and did my holistic health degree and multiple specific certifications in this particular area and really got me to where I am today. Uh, And the the thing is with him now, he hasn't been on on meds for years. He's thriving. Uh, He's in middle school. He's a straight A student. uh, But most importantly, he's happy and my family's happy and we now have have peace and calm in our house amazing amazing um well so many questions about that but i bet you a lot of parents would want to just jump to this question this and then we'll get to well how'd you do it um but how long was that journey yeah, look, it was it was a number of years. Uh, yeah. it, it happened in stages, and I, I think for me, once I started learning, uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to continue to learn, and there's always something to learn. So I'm still on the journey, uh, but now I uh, I'm really able to. Uh, help other families go uh, get to the same place as me so much quicker. But um, in terms of him, uh, really, we started implementing those changes straight away. And honestly, when I learned about the importance of food on behavior, and once I saw the changes uh, food Mm -hmm. and natural strategies uh, had on him, I really couldn't keep that information to myself. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, and that's where it sort of like led me down the path of being able to help Mm -hmm. To date, I think about close to a thousand families. So wow, amazing, yeah. amazing! I just I love this part of parents that when something happens to our baby bears, mm-hmm. um, we go into action. Oh, totally! Um, and uh, and make amazing thing happen and start movements and foundations and change yeah, the world. So, it is it is so, so true. Thank you. Oh, no, you thank mm-hmm. you as well uh, um, in what you do and in helping changing parents' lives as well. Mm. And uh, honestly, um, my team that work in, in my business, 
90% of them have actually been through my program with their child because when you get through it, all you want to do is help other people and let them know that it doesn't have to be this hard. And so everyone is so, um, so inspired and so motivated to, to, to get the goal for other families as well. Yeah. I certainly see that with sleep. So let's talk about, let's like dive in. Mm. Tell us about the, you know, the gut brain connection that you discovered and, and how that fits into ADHD. Yeah, look, I, I, I think the best way to start is probably starting off with some statistics. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's estimated that 54% of American children have been diagnosed with a chronic illness. And that was in 2018. Um, Mm -hmm. And that figure was only 15% a couple of years before. And so you Mm -hmm. look at the increase from 15% to 54%. Mm -hmm. One in two children have anxiety, asthma, Mm -hmm. type one or type two diabetes, epilepsy, cystic fibrosis, allergic conditions, learning disability. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, One in five have allergies, one in six have developmental delays and one in 68 have autism. Um, Mm -hmm. But why do you think that this rise has occurred so rapidly? You know, Mm -hmm. there's the answer is simple and it it all begins in the gut. And uh, 80% of the body's entire immune system is within the gut wall, uh, along with billions of nerve cells and extensive amounts of, of beneficial bacteria. Um, but all of our children's health is is quite literally connected to everything that occurs in the gut. And you know, I've got I've got families that come to me for guidance with their child's ADHD symptoms. And when I ask whether there's any family history of sickness, people usually tell me that everyone is fit and healthy. Uh, But when I really sort of dive deep and and Mm -hmm. press forward and ask whether they've suffered from diarrhea or constipation, they often then go, oh, yeah, they actually have. Um, They probably only go to the bathroom three to four times or three times a week. And they're actually surprised to learn that it's not healthy or normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, It might be very common, Mm -hmm. but it is a Mm -hmm. byproduct of an unhealthy gut. And, you know, as we dive deeper into these conversations, you know, I ask if their child has been on lots of antibiotics when they were younger and a massive percentage of children had. Uh, and I know my son had before we, uh, before we started the journey. Uh, I, I kind of wish I sort of kept a tally of how many kids uh, that I've spoken to had been on multiple rounds of antibiotics um, to sort of get some sort of percentage, but I, I never did right back in the day. I could start now. <laughs> um, right. But but what happens with antibiotics is they really work by killing bacteria or preventing it from growing. But unfortunately, most antibiotics can't distinguish between the good and the bad bacteria. And so what that means is they they can wreak havoc on the gut, uh, wreak havoc on the good bacteria, uh, and many people actually suffer lasting changes to their gut flora as a result of taking antibiotics. So uh, what happens is a a large percentage of these children have been on those multiple rounds and that Mm -hmm. is in turn compromising the gut. And when the gut Mm -hmm. is compromised, it's not a huge surprise to see that disorders and illnesses are on the rise. Uh, And Mm -hmm. that very, very much ties into ADHD because of the gut brain connection. So Hmm. I can dive deep. Total sense. Yeah. Yeah. I can dive deep into the gut brain connection. I mean, I could go on and on about this all day long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm thinking about a million things from what you're saying, because, of course, you know, you can see how all those things affect sleep, even though I know that's not what we're talking about today. But we do know that ADHD affects sleep. Yes. Uh, The medications affect sleep um, and, and the gut and even, you know, potty training and, you know, constipation. All of it. Yeah. So then, okay. So then now go further in terms of like when a family comes to you with a child like, like your son mm-hmm. and they're like, where, like, where do you start? Yeah. I, mean, like, I know you have programs. So, you know, maybe at the end, tell us a little bit about that, but sort of 
how does this all connect to then how do we treat ADHD? Yeah, totally. Well, I, mm-hmm. I uh, you know, we, we have a couple of different ways that we, that we help families and I'll, I'll go into those in a little bit. Um, but when I've got a family who has clearly got a kid with a compromised gut, um, we, uh, you know, I really explained to them about that gut brain connection that I was mentioning. And Mm -hmm. um, if our guts aren't functioning well, our brains won't function well either. And Mm -hmm. 90 5% of the body's serotonin and 50% of the body's dopamine is produced in the gut. And these are our neurotransmitters or our hormones that help us manage emotion and balance mood, uh, help our cognitive function. And emotional dysregulation is really, really common um, Mm -hmm. in in ADHD, but many caregivers Mm -hmm. don't realize that this emotional dysregulation actually starts in the gut. So one of the Mm -hmm. big things that we do is we start focusing on gut health to really try to improve that gut-brain connection. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, the brain has many areas involved in gut Mm -hmm. function, but the main one is the frontal lobe. And Mm -hmm. it's the area of the brain that talks to the gut via two-way chemical messengers. Um, And the frontal lobe is is responsible for things like attention and focus and executive Mm -hmm. function and planning Mm -hmm. and organizing and problem solving, which Mm -hmm. are all common symptoms of ADHD. And so when we Mm -hmm. can help that gut, we can help that brain, we can reduce those symptoms, we can help the emotional uh, dysregulation. And the best place to start to do that is with changing the diet. And um, it is the foundation of everything. And, you know, you, you, you can't heal the gut if you are pounding the body with terrible, terrible foods. And so that's the first place we start in removing inflammatory foods uh, and Mm. really replacing them with whole micronutrient rich foods. Um, Mm. And they start to sometimes see changes within a couple of weeks. And that was with my son, you know, when I took out gluten, dairy and soy and really started to feed his body two weeks later, he was a different chi- a child and mm-hmm. I am just constantly so amazed by these families that put in the hard work and then start to see the results because the tantrums mm-hmm. start to weaken, uh, they become mm-hmm. fewer and farther in between, uh, their palates start opening up as they start trying new foods, uh, they are able to sit still at school, they can focus easier They can manage their emotions. Um, One mum told me that her son's handwriting um, improved so dramatically in a a period of three months. And it's it's really just so amazing to see how that gut health uh, can Mm. really affect so many other areas of their lives. Absolutely. So I would imagine that you got to get a buy-in from the child, right? Yes. And also you're not just treating the child because you're really treating the whole family, right? Because then the parents who are grocery shopping and cooking and are changing their diet too. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, uh, it is, it's a, it's a life changing process and it's not easy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, but we are experts in doing this and the way that we've designed our courses is to make it as simple and easy as possible. Like that step by step plan yeah. and having us there basically holding the family's hands all the way through the process, giving them the resources that okay, they need go. to uh, uh, really be able to get to those results so much. You know, so I can imagine Donna that, you know, you're not just helping the child, you're really helping the whole family because if the child's diet has to change, that means the parents have to grocery shop in a different way and cook in a different way. And then their diet changes. And I'm sure they start feeling better too, um, as a side note. But um, do you tell us about that? Because that's that's also a journey because then it's the whole family going on the journey. 
And I would imagine sometimes you have to prioritize so it's not overwhelming. Yeah, look, it, it, I won't lie. The process um, can be hard, especially if you try to do it by yourself, which is what I did, <laughs> which was mm-hmm. I don't recommend with anyone. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what we're experts in. That's, that's where we, all of our resources and our training really helps families make those steps small one step at a time it's not a marathon um mm-hmm. sorry it's not a it's not a race it's a marathon yeah. and i i tell yeah. my families and i i think i say this every day rome wasn't built in a day and you don't need to make yeah. all these changes in one day either and so what we're mm-hmm. doing is we're teaching them to take the family on a journey and when you come through the other end honestly it is just an amazing journey to look back and see how far you've come and uh, mm-hmm. how you've revolutionized your family's life and health. Uh, I've had so many mm-hmm. families uh, where the parents do it as well. And the stories that I get about the parents' health improving is mm-hmm. uh, amazing. I mean, I had this one lady who has always had extremely high cholesterol and it was a it was a genetic trait and in her whole adult life had never been uh, um, within range. And uh, I think 12 weeks into our program, she went to the doctor and the doctor's like, what on earth have you done? Your cholesterol's dropped 30 points and you're in normal ranges. And she's like, well, I just did the diet um, for my child and change mine with it um he's like well just keep doing whatever you're doing um i had one other lady who had terrible terrible uh inflammation in her hip joint and she couldn't even walk up her stairs in her house mm. and she was mm. waiting for a specialist appointment and um to to get checked out to see where the inflammation mm. was coming from and 10 weeks into the program the doctor rang and said i've got an appointment for you and she said i don't need to come anymore it's completely mm disappeared and that was all with changing the diet and so look we we're literally Mm -hmm. there every single step of the way every day we're Mm -hmm. holding their each family's hand and we're Mm -hmm. providing them the resources not to make it as hard as it can be you know we're taking Mm -hmm. those small Mm -hmm. slow steps to one day you wake up and go oh, this is normal. We don't even have to think Mm -hmm. about this anymore. And that's what happens. You know, Tuesday Mm -hmm. might be your taco Tuesday night, every night. We can just change a few ingredients and it can become better and taco Tuesday can still remain. And so just changing one meal at a time or one product at a time is not as overwhelming than Mm -hmm. it is trying to do every single thing (laughs) on day one, which Mm -hmm. is what I did. And I can tell you multiple panic attacks later. (laughs) Right. Right. And I tantrums. Even, exactly. <laughs> from me, <laughs> not just from my son. But yeah, look, getting buy-in is 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 really important. And we mm-hmm. actually have created a kids program for the kids to do alongside. So their parents aren't just the ones saying, we're changing your diet. They're actually learning right. why from their point of view, not from an adult's point of view. We've mm. got cartoons and all of that sort of stuff. Oh, amazing. My son's all in right, so- yeah. I want to hear about about your courses, but um, just right before that, is there, you know, like a couple of takeaways for parents that if they maybe are contemplating one of your courses that we'll talk about in a minute, but mm-hmm. they want to see if, well, let me see if I could just focus on one thing yeah. now. Yep. What Do you have anything that you think that would be? Yeah, look, um, I think the biggest the biggest thing that um, families can do if they're just starting this journey and want to change one thing, um, I would probably start by trying to remove gluten uh, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and start with breakfast change up breakfast, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Mm -hmm. focus on whole foods rather than like just taking a box of cereal. And a really good example of that is something called overnight oats. Uh, Mm -hmm. And you can literally uh, um, make it up on a, uh, on a Sunday and it, um, it takes five minutes for the whole week. So uh, um, changing breakfast, it's a, it's a yep. great place to start. And when you're comfortable I with breakfast, that. move on yeah. to, uh, uh, move on to, uh, lunch or, and right. then when you're comfortable with lunch, move on to Monday night dinner. You don't have to mm-hmm. do it all at once. Mm, I love that. 
And do you usually recommend taking a probiotic? Uh, yes, I do. Um, mm-hmm. I will say you can't supplement your way out of a poor diet. So right. even if, um, uh, even if, um, you know, you want to take a probiotic, that's great because you're obviously trying to optimize that gut brain connection. Mm. Uh, the, the best thing that you can do is, um, start with diet, uh, bring in that, that, that probiotic. There is, um, they're not all created equal though. So um, sure. if people check out my website and, and uh, ADHDthriveinstitute.com uh, and go to my store, I have a number of uh, probiotics that I recommend on my store. Awesome. Okay. So tell me about <clears throat> your different courses because I know you have several. Yes. And the age ranges yeah, of yeah. children that they are applicable for. Yeah. Look, I'm a obviously the sooner the better is when you can start, you know, we usually say around four, um, uh, to the, to, uh, you know, four to 12 is a really great range, but we work with, uh, yeah. teenagers all the way up to 18 as well. Uh, with yeah. a teenager, you really need to make sure they're on board with that change. Yeah. And so, uh, um, it's, it's a different type of conversation that you're having with them. Now, if families just need help with, um, changing the diet and reducing toxins to reduce inflammation in the body, that's our base program, uh, our ADHD Thrive Blue program, which is a 12 week program uh, that mm-hmm. basically takes families all the way through step by step in why, what, how, and when, uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to reduce that inflammation in the body that will in turn reduce the inflammation in the brain. Uh, we then we then have our gold and platinum programs, which does the food and natural changes, but also uh, we add in lab testing. Uh, functional lab testing is probably a topic for another day that I could go on mm-hmm. and on about, but we're really mm-hmm. looking deep inside the body to see exactly what's going on. We're looking in the gut. What is the gut mm-hmm. doing? Um, we're looking mm-hmm. at that gut brain connection. We're looking at those neurotransmitters that I was talking about earlier, that serotonin, that dopamine. Uh, we're looking to make sure that they're getting all the vitamins and minerals that they need, that their body's able to digest the food that, that they're eating because they can fix the diet, but if they can't digest it properly, it's not going to get to where it needs to go. Right, right. Makes total sense. Okay. And so, um, the other, the goal, the other levels are offer more connection with the, what, what anything besides yeah. labs. I- yeah. So they, they do all mm-hmm. the food program. They, yeah. uh, um, uh, we reduce toxins in their life. So everyone does that no matter what. Uh, um, fabulous. and then some people order labs as well on top of that. And that would be okay. our higher level programs, but not everyone needs to start there. You know, right. uh, as I said, it's, 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 a uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. You don't have to mm-hmm. do everything. Um, and yeah. about 50% of the families that we work with, we change the diet and we don't need to go any further. Uh, and so why spend the money on the mm-hmm. on the lab tests when you don't have to? And so we really yep. assess the family's, um, the, the, the child's health history because that's a big mm-hmm. component of it. And if this kid's been mm-hmm. on multiple rounds of antibiotics mm-hmm. and been had terrible constipation, then we'll say most likely you'll have to do lab testing. Uh, and so we suggest they may do the higher level program. But if there's none of mm-hmm. that there, then mm-hmm. we're like, let's start just with the diet. Right. Okay. Amazing. And where's then the program you referenced about children that, that is for the children? Yeah. Is that so, within the course? Yeah. So if someone, it's it's for families that actually work with us, um, okay. they've got the ability to um, add that kids program on, on as well, just as a, as a side. Uh, some mm-hmm. families do it, some families don't, but honestly, the families that do it are the ones that get that really good buy-in. We teach the families in our normal program how to get the child's buy-in but this really does help supplement that oh for sure it's always easier if it comes from somebody else yes I know that when I (laughs) try yeah totally Mm -hmm. when I try to tell Mm -hmm. my sons um things they're like oh no Mm -hmm. mom but then if someone else Mm -hmm. does they're like okay (laughs) right exactly exactly 
And also, don't you, I, I thought I remembered you saying you have other resources for families too, like a parenting Yeah, program, we, we right? do. Yeah, we do. We have actually mm-hmm. an ADHD specific parenting course. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is um, just a short a short course uh, mm-hmm. based, uh, we've done, uh, we, we work with a parent and behavioral therapist. Actually, that parent mm-hmm. and behavioral therapist um, does a group coaching call for our, our other program once a week. Uh, mm-hmm. I forgot to mention we do five weekly group coaching calls inside our program so we're always there every day to help families when they've got obstacles so Mm -hmm. uh, but yes we do do a a standalone ADHD specific Mm -hmm. uh, parenting course which is really phenomenal uh i this uh behavioral parent and therapist that we have she's amazing Mm -hmm. and just um yeah, when you just speak to her, you feel calm. <laughs> and right. we, we all know, especially when we got kids with challenges, that you need a bit of calm in your life. Yeah, that's for sure. And, all, you know, and when you're talking about creating change, whether it's with diet or sleep, you know, there's other emotional dynamics that mm-hmm. take place within the family. You totally. Know, sometimes even just the parents' own resistance to change. Yes, no, you that's know, a big one. Um, yeah, and so I, I would imagine that having that therapist on board is really is really helpful and key. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's and that's uh, part of the reason that we we brought her in and then also created this other program. Mm-hmm. I like to think of it as baking a pie, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you've got all of these ingredients, and I'll have to mm-hmm. say like diet is probably like the crust of the pie or the filling of the pie, the most important one. And then, you know, you want to put a bit of cinnamon in it and that might be, you know, some chiropractic care or um, the apple is going to be the the change in the parenting. Um, uh, The, Mm -hmm. the, you know, there might be something else that will be working on sleep. And so Mm -hmm. you want to get all the ingredients to make the best pie possible. And it's not going to be just one thing. Uh, It is, it is a couple of key things that will really help. And sleep Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. huge. It is huge. Kids with ADHD need their sleep because it's going Mm -hmm. to actually exacerbate symptoms Mm -hmm. even more if they don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet the ADHD makes it more difficult for them to go to sleep. It does. It's that double-edged sword. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Not to mention, at least when they get older, depending on what state you live in, you know, school starts so early and Mm -hmm. that makes it more challenging and they tend to stay up late. And I know I, I, we were, uh, we moved mid pandemic, but we were in one school district before and they started Mm -hmm. at seven 50 in the morning. Now Mm -hmm. they don't start until like nine. And so that's great. Uh, but seven 50 was early. We, when my daughter was in high school, um, her first class was started at 7.15, 7.15 in the chair. Um, wow. And I remember we had a neighbor who taught high school chemistry. And she said that her first period class always got the whole class got 10% lower or 10 points lower on all their exams. Oh she my was gosh. like, they're asleep. They're literally, literally sitting in their chairs with their eyes open, most of them, but asleep inside. <laughs> yeah, which I can um, imagine, as I would be too <laughs> yeah, at that time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, I, I think it's such um, a gift that you're offering families and, and a light of, you know, light at the end of the tunnel to know that things can be different. They and can. then they can heal the ADHD naturally. Yeah. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that I want the listeners yeah. here today to know that it is possible to reduce ADHD symptoms naturally. So often mm-hmm. when a child receives a diagnosis, caregivers are not told about how food and other natural strategies can support children with ADHD. And I want these caregivers to have 
options. I want mm-hmm. them to know also that there's hope. Uh, yeah. I remember feeling absolutely desperate and I know I wasn't alone. Um, yeah. And there are solutions that will actually make a difference in their lives. Um, some of mm-hmm. them have tried so many things already that haven't helped and they mm-hmm. really want to find something that will work. And I want the, to remind parents that there's hope out there and that it is possible mm-hmm. to find that happiness and that peace and that calm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also let's not forget a very important piece of news is that you have a brand new book coming out. I do. I do. And I have a copy of it right here. Yes. It's called um, Thriving with ADHD, a guide Mm -hmm. to naturally reducing ADHD symptoms in your child. And Mm -hmm. everything that I teach in my program is actually in the book. And Mm -hmm. I remember back when uh, my, when I was going through this with my son, all I wanted was that book and that book was not there. Uh, and so yep. I went out and wrote it and I'm hoping that this can give the families the things that they need to get started. There's so many resources yep. in there that if you want to get started mm-hmm. at home on your own, you can, it's there. Uh, and so uh, it also shares stories of, um, other families, uh, showing mm-hmm. families that they're not alone. They're not Mm -hmm. the only ones out there going through this. There is that hope. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, yes, we're super excited about that. It launches tomorrow. Um, But you probably don't know what tomorrow is when you're listening to this uh, podcast. It will be be a lot alive and they can find it on Amazon, right? They can. They'll be able to find it on Amazon. So that's Thriving with ADHD. And my name is Dana Kay. Amazing. And we will be putting links to your social media and your website on our episode page on sleeplady.com forward slash podcast. Thank you again, Donna, for, for coming and for the work that you do in helping heal families all over the world. Thank you so much, Kim, for having me. Um, and I really appreciate your time and I can't wait to talk with you again soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.